We're halfway through September now, so I'm just going to start pulling up the sweet candle carrots and uh, hopefully we'll have them for our lunch. Let's have a look what we got. That's a can. That's a nice stumpy one. Big size on the diameter, but not so long. But we're quite happy with them. So I'll let you know what they taste like. I'm just going to start picking these last four uh, red cabbage, red drumhead now, and then we're going to pick them. So here we go. Nice cabbage. Whenever I pick brassicas out of the ground, cabbage, collies, whatever it is, I never ever leave the roots in for the fear of spreading club roots or anything like that. So this is no exception, these are going to come up now. As you can see, it's a lovely clean root ball there, no sign of club root. I'm very happy with that. Just trimmed all the leaves off and uh, give them a swirl under the tap. Now they're getting ready for pickly and the wire ton. <laughs> the cabbages have been uh, diced up and put in layers. Then there's a layer of salt goes on the top, then more cabbage again. And these two bowls here, it's that, that there is just one cabbage. So uh, <laughs> we've got to do them in stages, unfortunately, we've stuck for storage. And this is what ends up as with the red cabbage pickled. It's been soaking overnight in the um, salt. It gives good rinsing, let it dry off a bit, sterilised the jars, packed it in and filled it up with, in our case, it's malt vinegar. Some recipes say you can use spice, but I prefer malt. So I'll just leave it in there for a few weeks and I'll be tasting it. Just to give you an indication of the size, those jars there have been filled with just one cabbage, so we've still got another three cabbages left. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Um, I woke up this morning and got a bit of something on my chest. My asthma's coming out, I've had to get into my puffer, so I might be a bit out of breath this morning. Anyway, uh, we must carry on. And over the summer, one thing or another, a lot of work on the allotment, holiday, and whatever. Things in the garden have tend to get a bit neglected, and uh, one of those things I aim to do this year replace my garden gate because uh, it's been up nearly 35 years and it's starting to rot a bit. So uh, what I've done, I've bought a gate, and I've had a local joinery company knock me a frame up, and uh, I've just stained it. So uh, the, the job now I've got to do is actually fit the gate, take the old one down, fit it. I'll just show you what we've got. If you look down there, all the wood's gone rotten. And uh, it's starting to look a bit tired now, so we've got to change it. This is a new one. It's, um, it's pine, and I've just put a coat of um, one seal on it. Well, a couple of coats. Looks okay. 
I might put uh, something a bit more substantial a bit later on when it's hung. And uh, here's the frame. It's rebated, so uh, it'll get a bit more support when it's actually up. This is a piece of capping off the top of the old gate frame. Because this is a nice piece of hardwood, what I'm going to do is run sand this down with my belt sander, stain it and put it back on. Because it does stop the rain from actually sinking into the top of the frame through the joints. Well, I've got to admit to being a right burke. The plan was I was going to video the fitting of the gate then put it through like a high speed time lapse thing and uh, press the stop button and I pressed the start <laughs> so I'd uh, actually done all the work and the camera had been on anyway never mind uh, I'll just show you what we've got so far that's where we've got so far it's nearly finished now we've got the bolts on the latch and the what I call hook and band hinges there the only thing there, what I want to do is put a little packer on the top and then put a, a cap on which will like stop the rain from settling on the top. Um, I've got those out of the allotment at the moment, I've uh, just staining them and I've hung them up and they dry quite nicely over there, I'll just show you what we've got. That's what we've got all left to put on now, there's a couple of little packers and on the left is the, like a cap that fits on angled so the water runs off the top and it doesn't settle on the wood. But I've uh, stained it with this is, um, very good actually. It's, it's a bronze seal, one, one coat, timber coat, although I've put uh, two or three coats on. It's um, red cedar the colour is. I just hung them up to there and they dry nicely out the allotment within a few, well about 20 minutes and touch dry and probably work on them. So, uh, I think I've given them all the cards now and all good to now is fit them. These spacers will be actually screwed to the top of the frame. What I've done, I've bored the top out to 12mm and what I'll do, I'll put a, a pallet in the top to stop the water going in. There's the cap fitted now. That to excuse the shadows. I've uh, glued it on. And uh, it's, it's fitted quite tight actually, so by the time the glue goes off, there'll be nothing to move at all. And this is the view from the front. Just might put a little bit of beading up the side of there where I've had to pack the frame out. That shouldn't take too long to do. Well, it's the 24th of September and yesterday was the autumn equinox, so from now on the lights, the nights are longer than the days, so it's time to crack on. Um, what I'm going to do at the moment is just rip this last bit of sweet corn out, because there's, there's a few cobs on but they ain't much cob, and uh, then move over to the next bed, lift the sheeting off. And I'm going to use that as a, more or less a dumping ground for stuff, I want to create a burning pile. I'll keep that covered up with a tarp and have a fire a bit later on in the month or whatever and then start preparing the beds ready for the winter with a nice dressing of horse manure. 
I've still got a few things to plant. The garlic has not gone in yet. And I've got a few um, autumn, autumn onion sets they need to go in. So uh, we'll go from there. So that's the sweet corn ripped out for this year. I haven't got the art to take the dahlias up yet. There's still a few flowers left on them, so I'll give them another week or two and enjoy what flowers are left. Got the pile there starting ready. I'll cover those with a tarp a bit later on. Let it dry out and we'll have a little fire. I've covered all the rubbish up so far with this giant tarp in an attempt to keep it dry so it'll burn a bit better. I've still got the bed a bit behind there I'll take the screens down probably tomorrow and weed that. And I might share the lard in there so that I can actually have the fire on this bed. I've harvested the last of the grape, the grapes, <laughs> the um, beetroot, and that's what I've got, so I should be able to get a few jars out of them. The bed where they may now in has only got weeds, and uh, I'll have a look at that a bit later. This bed here is the one that I had the uh, first earlies in, and I just took the weeds out. I've just turned one fork over in the middle and it's just like crumble of the soil, it's really really good. So I'll probably give that a, a good top dressing with probably six inches of that well rotted horse manure I've got in the bays down the bottom. And uh, I may even do that tomorrow, so we'll see. Well that's about it folks for this one. It's been a grand day, I had a nice day and uh, got quite a bit of work done. And I'm just going to now enjoy the last few minutes of the rays going down with a nice rusty tapper. So until next time, see you later. Bye now.